It is game 41 of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our good pals over at Zappos. And the party animals at 17, 13, and 2 are the home team for only the fourth time on the tour. The bananas at 18, 20, and 2 overall, still four games behind the party animals in the season series between the protagonists and antagonists of Banana Land. Looking to win their first series since Jacksonville at the start of March. Let's take a look at how the Bananas line up defensively. Oh, forget the Bananas. The party animals are the home team. Let's take a look at Breland Olmadova, Reese Hampton, and Jake Skull from left to right in the outfield. Bryson Bloomer, Chase Acuff, Dustin Baber, and Jason Swan from third to first in the infield. Mike Vava Vavasis getting the start at the dish and Garrett Delano on the bump. Yeah, we only saw one trick play from the party animals last night. They're usually playing it a little safer on the road in unfamiliar territory. But also, Mike Vivasis coming back in at catcher. He caught last Saturday for Sean Fluke, and Fluke was excellent. So the party animals pitchers really respect Mike Vivasis' game-calling ability and the way that he can manage this ball game from behind the dish. Look out for Breland in left and Baber at second as your main sources of trick plays for the party animals, especially as of late. Garrett Delano on the bump. 48 and two thirds innings thrown. Dylan Porter, the only party animal who's been out on the mound for more innings on the tour thus far. Averaging four minutes and 27 seconds per frame toss and the team leader with those 40 strikeouts. Yeah, but Garrett Delano having a very rough May, an ERA at 13 and a half in four and two thirds innings pitched. He had six points lost and the MPI still around his average at four minutes and 36 seconds. Yes, in those four and two third innings, seven earned runs on 14 hits, two home runs and three ball four sprints when he had only had six ball four sprints in his first 43 plus innings on the tour. The Bananas go DR Meadows, Eric Jones Jr. and Michael Deeb to swing it in the first. Dan Oberst cleaning it, cleaning it up. Dakota McFadden in the five hole. Jackson Olsen, Ryan Cox, Bill Leroy, Danny Hosley and Dalton Malden round out the lineup. Here's Jesse Cole. On three, I need everyone here to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Showtime. The great state of Tennessee hangs in the balance tonight. The Bananas have won Florida. The party animals have won Texas and Oklahoma. We'll see if the volunteer state ends up being a 1-1 tie or if the Bananas can come out victorious. DR Meadows quickly behind 0-2. That's how Garrett Delano has made his bacon on the tour up until his recent struggles. Tough play for Chase Acuff up the middle, floats the ball off the party animals dugout. Infield single for DR Meadows, who went two for three last night and has been loving Nash Vegas. DR Meadows with a multi-hit game last night, and get this, three of his last four games on the tour have all been multi-hit games. He swiped a bag an evening ago. He's 14 for 20 on the tour in his stolen base attempts because he was also caught trying to steal home. Eric Jones Jr. getting to work quickly. He's going to bounce into a fielder's choice as Meadows barreled into Dustin Baber. Everyone's okay at second base. EJ just barely jammed on that. Looked like it had some good trajectory if he had gotten the barrel on it. Jones, the tour leader in homers, the team leader in RBIs, replaces Meadows over at first base. And now Michael Deeb, former Chicago White Sox product in the lefty batter's box. OPS plus at 107, as you can see there, he's been a better an average hitter on the tour, and that's honestly selling him short. He's hit 319, 394 on base percentage. It's really just a lack of pop so far on this still young-ish season that brings his OPS anywhere that close to 100. And for Deeb, he knows that he still wants to hit for extra bases. He actually had a 669 OPS in the month of May, the lowest mark he's had in a single month on tour. He's looking to improve that a ton here in June. It's 842 overall for reference, and he was pretty close to 1,000 when he entered the month of May. That ball lined to left center. Reese Hampton will cruise in and snag it and flip the ball in as Jones scampers back to first. 
Good lumber, but nothing to show for it. Deeb now 0 for 4 in the series. And Dan Oberst will swing away. The Bananas leader in batting average at 375, and you can see the OPS Plus pretty serious there at 154. Dan in his sixth season, check that, fifth as a banana. Three collegiately, year two as a pro. Delano and Oberst, sparring partners in jiu-jitsu. Facing off, and Dan has had a lot of success against the party animals ace on the tour thus far. A 571 batting average against Garrett Delano. He has a home run against him. He took him dead center in Grayson Field the night of Banana Fest. Yeah, he really likes facing Delano out there. Little Bermuda Triangle situation, but Jake Skoll Takes control, flicks the ball into the stands. And a good top of the first inning for Garrett Delano. Works around the infield single to lead it off. And now Kyle Lewigs in his first ever banana ball game as the starting pitcher for the away team. Will go out there and have to defend a scoreless inning. One run from the party animals and they'll claim the point available in the first inning. The Bananas defensively have Michael Deeb in left, D.R. Meadows back flipping in center, Danny Hosley in right. And from third to first in the infield, Jackson Olsen, Ryan Cox, Dalton Malden, Eric Jones Jr. Behind the dish, Bill Leroy on the mound, Kyle Lewigs, the twin princes of Banana Land. You can see on our graphic here, the Bananas just two trick plays away from 150 on the season. They recorded six last night. DR Meadows becoming the first outfielder on the tour to 20 trick plays. Incredible work. And for Ryan Cox, four trick plays last night. We saw him doing it all defensively for the Nanners. Let's take a look. And how Cowboy Kyle has been doing in his sixth year as a Nanner. Four collegiately, year two as a pro. Those 80 innings pitched, nearly 18 more than anybody else who's thrown on this world tour. The MPI just south of five minutes per inning thrown. And he's leading the tour in strikeouts. His ERA at 6.41 is actually .03 less than the team average. And the party animals... They're really good against Kyle Lewigs in the first inning. I think that's really the tail of the tape for him. If he can have, if he can limit the party animals here in the first inning, he's going to be off to a very good start and should have a lot of confidence going into the middle innings for the Bananas tonight. Well, the party animals against him. With Reese Hampton, the switch hitting center fielder at the top of the order. Jake Skoll right behind him. A pair of Gastonia Honey Hunters in the Atlantic League a summer ago. Brayson Bloomer in the three-hole. Dalton Cornett getting the half night off in the cleanup spot. Tanner Thomas in right field. Breland Almodova, Chase Sakuff, Jason Swan, Mike Vivasis, and Dustin Baber rounding out the 10 that Vava and Sam Claycamp have penned into play tonight. And this is a team batting 321 against Kyle Lewigs on the season. He's going to try and cut down on that, but it's going to be really difficult against Hampton and Skull, who are both batting over 400 against him on the season. If that 321 team batting average against Kyle sounds good, it's just one point better than their average batting, at their, of their batting average, rather, on the tour. They hit 320 as a team. And there's a reason why at 17 and 13, they're four games better than the Nanners in the marquee matchup of the 2023 World Tour. Reese Hampton, first pitch swinging right back at Kyle's head. And after going four for five in evening ago, batting average up to 408, a tour best by far. One for one, and the hit streak continues. I mean, already five hits in this series for Hampton. Now a 24-game hit streak, the longest we've ever seen in Banana Ball. And by the way, last night, he became the first player on tour to ever eclipse 50 hits in a season. That was number 52 you just saw right there. And the inning-winning run is aboard with dangerous speed. He's 13 for 16 in his stolen base attempts. And Jake Skoll ahead, one ball and no strikes. Four of Skoll's eight homers on the tour have come against Kyle Lewigs. And 
He's trying to end the inning right there. He has the first walk-off in Party Animals history. That was back on March 5th in Jacksonville, which is also the last time that the Bananas swept a series. One outside, 2-1 count on the Toros leader and on base percentage at 481, as well as OPS at 1238. Video game numbers for Skoll, who gets that on a hop to Jackson Olsen in the shift. Play at second, just barely in time. Randy Voss says that Olsen got it to Cox just a hair before Hampton arrived at the bag. And that's a really tricky situation. The Bananas had the Skoll shift on, so Malden playing a little in right, in shallow right field. Olsen more so there covering the second base bag. It of course was hit to him and for Cox he had to go over cover that bag. That is a big out taking the speedy Reese Hampton off the base paths. Bender exactly what Kyle needed. Two down as he gets Bloomer swinging. And we've continued to see that slider from Lewigs absolutely baffle Bryson Bloomer out there. There's no other party animal batter who has struck out more this season against Kyle than Bloomer. The entire Bananas team participating in a little hick down celebration after Cowboy Kyle got his first strike out of the night. And we're right back to the action. Dalton Cornett cleaning it up tonight with the inning winning run at first base. Trying to notch his second walk off of the tour. In his second tour with the party animals hitting 345, a 430 on base percentage. That one on the ground. Dalton Malden between the legs over to first. The songbird of our generation with his 18th trick play in 19 tries. And Kyle successful defending his first scoreless inning. No points earned in the first. Let's talk about how Ryan Cox earned the Showman of the Night Award an evening ago. Yeah, Ryan Cox earning his fourth Showman Award on the season. He is now tied at the top of the leaderboard with Breland and with Danny Hosley. So now we hop into the game action. Got the banana band introducing Ryan Cox here. He comes up to the plate with a runner on second base. And how about this, tucking it bare down the left field line. That's a walk up double for Coxie. Olsen and the boys, they're gonna dance over at home plate. Now, here's where things are gonna get tricky for Ryan Cox on the night. Little inside pitch on Chase Acuff. Cox with the bare hand and Breland Almodova, who was trying to steal on that pitch, cannot get back to first base in time. That is a trick play, double play for Ryan Cox. Now Breland once again, a ground ball. Cox between the legs. Molden, great turn and Oberst with the stretch. There's another trick play, double play. Cox is second of the night. And what a generous man. He's gonna give Split an autograph after that. Now with Zach Duke on the mound. Ryan Cox, 360 trick play. He's going to do a little dancing once again. A phenomenal play for Ryan Cox. He had four trick plays tonight. He added on another hit. And now we've got Dakota McFadden facing Delano here in the bottom or in the top of the second. It is still bizarre for me, Josh. <laughs> and only the fourth time on the tour that the Bananas have been the away team. I don't think that's going to be the last time we boof that. Here in night two in Nashville. Five, six, seven for the Bananas. Each team got a base knock from their leadoff hitters in the first, but Delano and Kyle able to strand the man on. McFadden, Olsen, and Cox due to swing it here in the top of the second. DMAC took Delano deep in Las Vegas. Dakota would hit a bomb in Tulsa as well to make it seven home runs on the tour. 
and boy does he swing it well against Garrett Delano. He went three for three against him in the month of May. Ends up working the ball for a sprint. And he's going to be content with one base as all seven party animals have to touch the ball before it's live. Breland Almodova with his helmet on the left fielder is the seventh and final man who had to touch it. DMAC immediately pinch run for by Malachi Mitchell. Malachi with 36 steals in 38 attempts, by far the best on the tour. 17 more bag swiped than Dan Oberst, who has the second most at 19. Jackson Olsen's been swinging early and often. Had a double in the second inning last night. Part of a one for three performance, ended up scoring the inning winning run. That one in on the hand, soft tapper to Swan. He has no chance at Malachi at second. So Delano beats the hustling bananas third baseman to the bag, one down. And we have our first runner in scoring position tonight. Ryan Cox, see if he can take his showman performance from night one into night two. Not only does he enjoy playing manhunt on scooters, as the graphics said, also had a mean wipeout on a scooter when playing in Oklahoma City. That one into left field. Malachi Mitchell being waved around third. Throw from Breland isn't going to happen. Flash the kid scores. Back-to-back -back nights, Ryan Cox has pushed a run across in the second inning. Great piece of opposite field hitting there from Ryan Cox. He's talked about how he's been flying out to Breland Almodova quite a bit. He loves going the opposite way, but here able to poke it through that six hole. A cup unable to come up with it. And when you've got a guy like Flash the Kid on second base, you know he's going to come around and score a run. Josh, you thought I was going to say back to back nights. Ryan Cox has walked off the second inning, didn't you there? You bet your bottom dollar I did. For a couple seconds I was. The Bananas are the away team. One run is not enough. We'll keep playing until Delano can get three outs. Cox at first, Bill Leroy at the dish. Bananas catcher. Hitting 289, a 390 on base percentage. Continues to be a very valuable man with the bat in his hands. Five years at the University of North Georgia. And over 400 his freshman campaign, never hit below 300. That one just misses the outside corner. Good call from Vincent Chapman. Back behind the dish, serving the first of his two game suspension last night. He'll serve the second on Thursday when the Aussie Drop Bears make the trip from the land down under to challenge the Bananas and Bill Leroy has struck out for only the seventh time on the tour. He ties Dalton Cornett for the least amount of strikeouts for any of the everyday players. Yeah, very rarely do you see Bill strike out. In fact, he's got a 2.17 sprint to strikeout ratio, which leads all bananas on the tour. Cornett's the only man on either side with a better sprint to strikeout ratio. Delano got Bill with the curveball there. Those two seam and four seam fastballs, as well as cutters, all in the low 90s. The four seamer can touch 94, and now this is not what you want to see in the slightest. Delano is walking off the mound and chatting with Sean Fluke, who's going to come in and replace him. Garrett's been battling some neck stiffness as of late on the tour. But it didn't look like it was anything with his neck there. That is the last thing we want to see. The party animals already without Colin Ledbetter, who is projected to be one of the best arms in the tour. And how about Sean Fluke? You look at numbers that overall on the tour aren't amazing. As of late, he's been superb. And he just threw one warm-up pitch, never threw a bullpen. And he's ahead of Danny Hosley 0-1.
This is seriously shades of Jacksonville, Florida. Carson Goldsmith started that game, had to leave due to injury. And what did Sean Fluke do? He came right in without a warm up pitch at all and started throwing in that ball game. It's unbelievable what this guy can do for the party animals. Ryan Cox now a perfect four for four in stolen base attempts. Vincent Chapman saying it's a 2-1 count. 2-1 count. That one back up the middle, it's trouble. Cox getting waved around, third by Gillum. Throw from Hampton, that's a stop sign at the last second. Hosley was about 40% of the way to second base, but nobody covering first, so a safe return to the bag there. And Gillum with a smart move, not testing the 80-grade arm of Reese Hampton in center. No, and you see Reese, Skull, Reese Hampton and Jake Skull switch a lot of the times between patrolling center and right field. I mean, you can interchange them. They both have incredible outfield arms for the party animals. Same goes for Breland in left. 15 years of minor league experience between the three party animals outfielders as Dalton Malden bounces that one to Bryson Bloomer. And Sean Fluke is able to strand the man he inherited from Delano. Bananas at the corners at the end of the top of the second inning. They do push one run across. Cox with the RBI single to drive in Flash the Kid. And the party animals will need one run to win the inning, two to win it. Cowboy Kyle Lewix will have his first ever inning lead to try and defend now. And if I were Kyle Lewix right now, I'd probably be pretty happy about this situation. I think this is what he was looking forward to, knowing that he has sort of room to play with and just that he has run support. It's very different than throwing in the top of the innings. We have a little sing-off going on. Pour some sugar on me in the name of Scoob. <laughs> Nice. You like that one? That was really good. Shades of Michael Deeb last night. And move into the groove and, and just when it hit me, somebody turned around and shouted, play that funky music, white boy. Play that funky music, white. How about uh, yeah. Brian? Oh, my God. <laughs> got in on some jamming at Rippy's Honky Tonk last night, and it was one of the most magical things I've seen in my life. I could not believe it. I mean, he, he goes up to the keyboardist, and yes. he tells him, hey, I, I play the sax. If you guys want me to come up and join you, he's like, well, let me ask the lead singer. And uh, ask the lead singer. He's, he seems intrigued. <laughs> Brian goes up there, and it was as if he had been playing with that band for years. It was <laughs> unbelievable the instant chemistry they had out there. He is a talented musician, man. It was beautiful. They did two songs. It was probably like 25 minutes in total because it was a whole lot of jamming and scatting and scooting and scobbing. Uh, it was incredibly fun to watch, and the memory blasted Josh and I right in the cranium there because they started out with a little play that funky music, White Boy. Wild Cherry, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. I've never seen a guitar battle a saxophone before. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful sight to see and hear. Tanner Thomas in the five hole, leading off the bottom of the second inning. Kyle Lewis is going to bring his infielders in with an 0-2 count. They're going to do a little ring around the rosy here. Hidden ball trick. Who's got the ball? Kyle and his four infielders doing the exact same motion. Winding up the arms and delivering. Swing and a miss. Jackson Olsen strikes out Tanner Thomas. How about the trickery from the Nanners? That was mind boggling. I mean, that's one of the craziest trick pitches you will ever see out there. Where's the ball coming from? Oh, Jackson Olsen with a great strike there. I don't think Bill knew where the ball was coming from either. That was some heat from Jackson. 72 mile an hour fastball. We've got some track man numbers for the first time on the tour. Incredibly enthused about that. And Kyle, back to work. 
That strikeout is going to go to Cowboy Kyle because he did the lion's share of the first two strikes of the at-bat. It's his second of the night. Now Breland Omadova, the left fielder, the style in Hawaiian. Right of Honolulu, Hawaii. Leader at the top of the zone, inside corner. Count even at two balls and two strikes. One tap foul. Sammy Claycamp trying to make a play on it. That one back up the middle, past the dive of Dalton Malden. Really now three for four in Nashville. His hot hitting continues, batting average up to 313. And he's done that because three of his last four contests have all been multi-hit affairs. And by the way, he's reached double digits now 10 games for his on-base streak. Great work for the man in his second world tour. Now Chase Acuff in his first tour. Made his Banana Land debut in the summer of 2021. Teammate of Kyle Lewix, Bill Leroy, Christian Dearman, Matt Malatesta, Bryson Bloomer. A whole lot of guys around here who won that 2021 Coastal Plain League Championship. Man out of Eckerd and Rollins College in that order. The St. Pete kid. Swinging a great bat as of late. Went 0 for last night, but is still working on a great on base streak. Actually, he did not reach base safely last night, Biko. His 13 game, no, his his 13 game hit streak was snapped, but he still retains a 23 game on base streak. Uh, pardon my, uh, <laughs> pardon my mistake there. <laughs> hey, that's okay, buddy. It was the ball four sprint that he picked up two ribeyes on. Drove in half the party animals runs for the entire night. We were talking about it post game. He was just telling me how disappointed he was about the hit streak. And I was like, don't worry, man. You still got the on base streak, Ellen. We'll shout it out. Low cue ball. He trying to figure out if he's going to have to run down the first baseline. A little scissor kick on the slide from Bill Leroy. Count still one and two on the party animal shortstop. Chase, when you rewatch the broadcast tonight, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Got to keep that going. Between Hampton and Acuff, party animals have some terrific on base and hitting streaks going. There goes Breland. Slow tapper towards third. Jackson Olsen with a cowboy hat now on. Easy breezy, beautiful across the diamond. And two down as Almodova up to second base. That's a productive out by Chase Acuff. Again, one of the hardest guys to strike out on this Party Animals team. That was a perfect example of him just getting bat on ball and with Breland taking off on the pitch instead of a fielder's choice. Now Breland in scoring position for Jason Swan. Chase has 10 ball, four sprints, only nine strikeouts on the tour. Swanee, the first baseman, went one for four. In night one in Powder City. Count even at one and one. Neither Malden nor Cox holding on Breland at second base. So he's got quite a healthy lead. Peter gets the inside corner. And unfortunately we have not gotten any trackman statistics since the 72 mile an hour fastball from Jackson Olsen. Stop sign for Breland at third as Danny Hosley sends a two hopper all the way to Bill at the dish. And it's deja vu all over again. Two outs with runners on the corners, the exact situation that Sean Fluke was able to get the party animals out of in the top of the inning. The tying run 90 feet away, the inning winning run 270 feet away. And this is where things have been tricky for the party animals, especially last night in Nashville. The party animals only going two for 10, batting with runners in scoring position last night. First pitch bender is high. Kyle throws a slider and a curveball, four seam, two seam fastballs. Toys around with a changeup and a splitter. Cutter's involved as well. 
As the front door bender gets a swing and a miss from Vava. Four for 22 on the tour. A double, only one run driven in. But he's got double the sprints then. He does strikeouts. Two sprints, one K. Fan could make a catch on this. They do! Mike Vavesis pops out to a fan. And the Bananos win the second inning. What a clutch snag by that guy. We've seen this happen a couple of times on the tour. In fact, it fell in the banana's favor in Sugar Land when a fan caught a foul ball for Bill Lee. Now Kyle gets the benefit, and the bananas jump out to a one-point advantage in this ball game. Couldn't have got the bananas out of a stickier situation. Second time Vava has fouled out to a fan on the tour. First was in Montgomery, Alabama. As you get another look, and that's why you bring your glove to a banana ball game, folks. Look at the raucous celebration from Eric Jones, Kyle Lewis, and company. It's dance time. Maceo and the boys breaking it down as we head to the third inning with the Nanners up a point. That was a timely snag. And here comes DR Meadows with Caitlin Scott, one of our marketing darlings and videographer extraordinaires. And what a two step they're breaking out here. Oh, backflip! Big finish! That was something else. DR and Caitlin, that's a 10 out of 10 job. That was unbelievable. I mean, both of them very experienced in the old line dancing routines. Mellicent Bean Supreme and Zach Frangelo, you have competition. That one cranked, backhanded by Bloomer, picks it up off the ground, across the diamond, in time! Bryson Bloomer with a magnificent play to cut down DR Meadows. And the fans want a challenge. We'll see if we get one. Yes, we do! The second fan challenge of all time, and it's time to slap the Riddle headsets on, the Riedel headsets, rather, and chat with Zach Frangelo and an umpire to get this thing right. Jalen Johnson, our replay man, what do we have? Looks out to Biko. Yep, confirm it. Confirm out. So the ruling on the field will stand. That only took one look. The fans are a career 0 for 2 in their challenges, although I like the call there. It was bang, bang. And, and I think that's what we're going to see early on in this tour, is a lot of aggression from the fans, a lot of peer pressure to go ahead and, you know, send that challenge. And a well-deserved high five from Vincent Chapman to Randy Voss, as Randy has been the victim of both challenges 
It was the out call at home plate. Once again, it was DR Meadows who was called out and remained out. EJ rips that one down the third baseline all the way to the 330 mark. And we'll have a two bagger. Fifth double of the tour for Jones. And he's bringing out all of his teammates to celebrate. Line dance number two tonight. We're only in the top of the third. They're having a good time. Oh, great work, guys. Okay, where are we going? <laughs> all right. Let's celebrate on second. And retreat back to the third base dugout. Malachi Mitchell pulls a Houdini and will replace EJ at second base. Remember in banana ball, you can pinch run every time through the order. So Malachi already gets his second trip around the bases. Less than three innings into the ball game. The pickoff attempt from Fluke to get Malachi, who's going to get a stop sign from Gillum. Hampton scampering in to retrieve the overthrow. And that is the second out error on the tour for the Exterminator. And back-to-back -back games now where we've seen Sean Fluke have an error, both of them on pickoff attempts. Malachi slams the brakes as that one doesn't get too far away from Vava. The battery mates here for the party animals have been coaching the Hudson High School varsity baseball team for much of the last five years. Obviously, they can't do it here in 2023, full-time players on this year tour, but Vava, the head coach, fluke his assistant, best pals down in the St. Pete area. And speaking with assistant coach Sam Claycamp, he told me that Fluke really enjoys catching with Vava as they got to throw home. And Vincent's going to nail Malachi. We may see another review, the second of the inning here. Tyler Gillum's got to make a decision. He's going to throw the banana on the field. Time to slap the renal heads in on again. Two challenges in the past three plays. The first was from a fan. This one comes from the coach of the bananas, Tyler Gillum and Adam Virant. Want another look at this. First time that Vincent Chapman has been tested. Mr. Zach Frangelo with the headset on. Randy Voss joins him at the table. Jalen Johnson, let's see what we've got going on. Okay, first look from the first base side. Bang, bang. It, it looks safe to Zach. I'm unsure. This is the angle. Oh, he looks safe. Yep, Jalen pulling it back. What do you think, Josh? I, I'm leaning safe, but I'd like a little bit of a closer angle. I think we might overturn this. Yeah, I think he's safe, Zach. Zach wants to see that last one again. This is our last look. And a decision will come after this. Yeah, he's safe. He's safe. He's safe. Okay, this one's going to be overturned, folks. What a rush that is. And how about the ovation? What a reaction from this full capacity first Horizon Park crowd. The first time the Bananas have ever challenged a play, they're successful. Good work from Tyler Gillum, Adam Virant, and company. And this is where things have gotten really interesting. We've seen the fans lose both of their challenges, but now the Party Animals and the Bananas have won both of their first challenges on this tour. And Malachi has scored two runs in less than three innings of action. Big 12-6 Bender gets the bottom of the zone for Dan Oberst. That one chopped to Bloomer, and that's a tough play. Tries to get it on an in-between hop. Deeb's going to go first to third as 
Ubers follows him to second. That was a 67 mile an hour 12-6 curve. Turned on it. And what's the official ruling, Josh? I think it's a hit. Feels like a hit to me. That was 91 miles per hour off the bat, which is no joke anytime you're north of 90. And it was a really weird in-between hop for Bryson Bloomer. And he gets another chance. Now he's got Deeb caught in between third and home. Michael tries an evasive maneuver, ends up being tagged out. And the Bananas will trade runners on second and third. With one down for runners on the corners with two away. Remember, one run home as Malachi Mitchell originally called out at the dish by Vincent Chapman. That one was reversed. Shades of the play that caused us to institute replay reviews in the first place. The dramatic ender to Monday night's game in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And saw Eric Jones appearingly get a hot head first slide safe into the plate called out by Vincent Chapman. He was irate. Tempers flared as DMAC. How about that? He's a savvy base runner. He's now six for six in stolen base attempts. Three of first, three of second. And he's sneaky. You know, the party animals don't expect a big guy like McFadden to run the bananas pinch run for him a lot. But when he sees a situation where he can get a base, especially when guys are on third, McFadden's going to take those opportunities. Olsen to a diving chase, Hayka, 360 over to first base. And that is a run-saving snag by the party animal shortstop in the shift. Robs Jackson Olsen of what would have been his first base knock of the night. You get another look at the diving play by Acuff. He is smooth as silk. And let's analyze those two challenges with Zach Ferrangelo, the director of entertainment for the Savannah Bananas. How wild was those back-to-back -back plays, Zach? Well, I'll tell you what, all we're getting is a horrific, just horrific, high-pitched scream from Zach. Our microphones continue to give us major problems. What do we got now? Oh, yeah, that's just that's no fun. Okay, well, it was really fun trying to talk with you, Zach. But it sounds like you're screaming like a banshee down there. <laughs> Dude, you're going to hurt me, man. You know, you miss 100% of the shots you do not take. Yeah, there it is again. Okay. Why? I uh, just, you know, I figured maybe it would work, <laughs> but I tried it the seventh or eighth time. We'll, we'll work out the kinks with our on-field microphone and get to hear from Zach about the challenges at some point in our lives. There have been four between the first two games that the challenge has been a possibility. And as we mentioned, the fans are 0 for 2, but the party animals and the bananas have both been successful in their only attempts. And what's nice is you love seeing the teams who are aggressive and willing to use their challenges. We have seen all of our challenges in both games within the first three innings. The bananas still have their challenge tonight. Remember, for teams, if you win your challenge, you keep it. As soon as you lose, you're done for the night unless showdowns arise when both teams will get another challenge, although those will not be kept if you win. Bottom of the order for the party animals here in the bottom of the third. Baber, and then at the top, Hampton and Skull to swing it. Bananas lead the frame by a run and the game by a point. Kyle so far has stranded all three runners he's allowed. Three singles for the party animals. All left on the bags and make it four singles for the boys in pink. The bananas trying to shift on a lot of these party animals, but we're seeing them go up the middle a lot. That's now three hits to center field for the party animals tonight. I mean, maybe you'll see the bananas uh, double play duo kind of shift more towards that second base bag as this game progresses. That was a 69 mile an hour front door curveball from Cowboy Kyle. Very nice. 98 miles per hour off the bat of Dustin Baber. Reese Hampton, the switch hitting center fielder. 
Line the first pitch of the ball game just to the left of Kyle's head on the mound for a single up the middle. And it's boogie time. Louis Malden, Cox, and Meadows with a funky little ditty. Feels like we're back in the 50s. And the pitch is looped over the head of DR in the six for seven here in the capital of the Volunteer State. And Reese Hampton, we saw all the extra base hits that he had had uh, before this series. All of his hits in this one, singles. And by the way, by the way, Reese, when you watch this broadcast back tonight, is you have done for the first 32 games that you've played on the tour. We really do appreciate you pointing up to us after your first hit of the night. Make sure that we note that the hit streak at 24 games now is still still going and still as historic as ever. Big moment here for the party animals. Inning tying run at second. Inning winning run at first. 0-1 coming to Jake Skoll. Jake put good lumber on a ball in the first inning, but hit into the shift. Ended up being a 5-4 fielder's choice, even though it was to the first base side of second. Two one count now on the party animals right fielder. Team leader in homers with eight of them as he sends that one towards the crowd. Could be a huge first out here. It is not caught. Although a nice snag on a bounce. Chapman and Voss both signal that no catch was made. 2-2 now on Skoll. Tied for the tour lead in triples at three. Same with RBIs at 33. And pacing all hitters in on-base percentage OPS and ball four sprints. He's an extra base hit machine for the part animals. Seven hits in the month of May, five of them going for extra bases. That's two doubles, a triple, and two long balls. This is where banana ball is so vicious on pitchers. Ball four will tie the inning. 3-2 from Kyle. Goes right after Skoll. Bouncer to Dalton Malden. No one's covering first base. Eric Jones can't get back there in time. Skoll runs like the wind. It's an infield single. And the bases are juiced with no outs. Inning, winning run in scoring position. The tying run 90 feet away. That's a frustrating hit to surrender if you're Kyle Lewis. You had Dalton Malden set up in the skull shift in a perfect position. But Jones trying to die for that ball. And if you're Kyle, you're honestly not expecting to have to cover the bag on a play like that. Unfortunately, they just couldn't beat Skull, who's a great base runner. Grayson Bloomer tied with Jake for the tour lead with those 33 ribeyes. Struck out his first time. Kyle confounded him with that slider. Just gonna keep going back to the well. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. What a big spot in this ball game. Count two and one on the animals third baseman. Boomer from Lexington, Kentucky. Just about as close as we'll get to his hometown. That one shot into left field. Party Animals tie the inning. Hampton gets a stop sign. Four straight singles. The third inning is locked out of run apiece. And with nobody gone, the Animals have a heck of a chance to get their first point tonight. And they've got the right man coming up to the plate for them. Dalton Cornett betting 415 this season with runners in scoring position. And by the way, we talked about it a little bit earlier. He's a guy who does not strike out for the party animals. It's really just a matter of putting the ball in play as the bananas are going to shift the entire infield in. Backdoor bender. A one count on Cornett. Grounded out into a trick play at the hands of Dalton Molden at second his first time. That one line to Molden, throw back to third. Not in time, Skoll able to scurry back just ahead of the throw from the Nanner's second baseman. That's a big first out though. That's a massive first out and Dalton Molden with just a great reaction to snag that liner. From Dalton to Dalton. 
as Joe Lytle shows off his injured hand from a night ago on the first ever challenge used. That was when DR slid in, was called out, and the call survived the challenge. It's always good to see Lytle pretending to kick our bat boys in the face. That ball looped into left. Tanner Thomas has his first career walk off. And the party animals have tied this game at a point apiece. They win the third inning, two to one. And over 10,000 folks here between 3rd and 5th Avenue chanting no, no, no as the party animals chant yes, yes, yes. A little more than 42 minutes into our affair. Each team with a point. Party animals notch that one scoring two runs on five hits, all of them singles. Tanner with his 31st RBI as Hampton scores his tour leading 46th run. And that's what the party animals are so good about, just stringing hits together, using sprints in that equation as well. And for Tanner Thomas, he took Kyle Lewix deep in his last start, homering in Oklahoma City, an opposite field blast. Now he's gonna go to the opposite field once again and earn the ninth walk up of the tour for the party animals. The banana band blasting away in the stands. As Jake Lealios, as giddy as ever, twerking on a depressed split who looks like he's walking the plank with Dylan Porter behind him. It's an uncomfortable position for split, I'd imagine. It's got to be. Let's listen into the band here real quick. I'm going to go up there by the table, man. Sean McBride and his boys. Absolutely killing it as DJ the Invader and a fan perform on top of the Bananas dugout. Sean Fluke came in for Garrett Delano with an out in the second inning through one warm-up pitch and was able to strand the runner he adopted that was on first base over at third. It now gets his first full inning of the night. That is the quote-unquote magic of Sean Fluke out there on the mound. He's on a heck of a run right now. Quickly ahead of Ryan Cox. The banana shortstop as Vincent Chapman calls time. He's got to dust off the plate. Oh, he's got to be able to see all of that as now a really dramatic dance. Vincent seemingly all by himself. And the emo emotion pouring out of him as he about faces and shakes his derriere at a pace I did not think was legal in the great state of Tennessee. Ten years ago, this was outlawed. <laughs> Luckily, the rules have gotten to loosen over the years. If we were in Herschel Greer Stadium, that would not have been allowed. Luckily, we're in First Horizon Park. Built in 2015 for the cool price of $91 million for the Milwaukee Brewers AAA franchise, Nashville Sounds. We're not with the Brewers at the time. Part of the Oakland Athletics when this park was first built. That one at the bottom of the zone, Cox behind one and two. That one laced foul. Cox had an RBI single his first time up. Swipe second base. And then he loops that one into shallow right center. Baber going back, bare hands it with a jump. 34th trick play in 36 attempts for Dustin Baber. That was a doozy. That was one impressive trick play. Dustin Baber was still in mid-air when he caught that ball barehanded. Derek Ginger continues to impress. That was a beauty. Oh, that uh, you're going to see that on the right rundown, folks. Turn it into a jiff and hang it in the Louvre. Bill Leroy with one away. 
recorded only his seventh strikeout of the tour. His first time up, that was against Delano. That was the last out that Garrett got tonight. Two one count on Leroy. No attempt to steal first on that one, just dribbling a few feet away from Mike Vivasis. Three one to Bill. And then the count runs full. Fluke from the windup. Had a hot shot past the dive of Bloomer into left. And Bill is one for two on the night. What a special guest we have joining us in the booth. It is the country music legend Thomas Red. How you living, Big Tiger? I'm good, man. I'm better now. This is amazing. So you're having fun tonight? I'm having a blast, dude. My, my wife and, and a bunch of our buddies are here uh, sitting up uh, in, in this top section here. This is absolutely incredible. See, it, it's pretty different, man. <laughs> Dude, so, I mean, I, I think I saw it on the Today Show one time. I think Hoda was talking about it. She I was. was. Like, I just could, I had a smile on my face, and I told my wife, I was like, whenever they're in Nashville, we have to go. <laughs> like, I, Dude, I was cry, I've, I've cried when uh, the umpire started freaking twerking. I, I, I lost it. I lost it. Yeah, that's, that's a popular one around <laughs> these parts. So good. So good. Danny Hosley at the dish. Single his first time. It's just about everyone and their moms jerk wherever they are in the ballpark. <laughs> constant music, constant energy in the young sport of banana ball. Savannah. We're in our 71st game all time, 30 for, 41st rather of the tour. And Nashville is our 15th stop. Boy, it's been a blast. The first base, the first base coach is, is my hero. Maceo Harrison. Golly. <laughs> Think you might take him on your next tour with you? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> how much rehearsal time does it take, honestly? Like before this whole thing started, how long did they just sit on a baseball field and figure this out? A few hours of work. That's it. A lot of planning before that. Rehearsal probably about 45 minutes for an hour at 1 p.m. and then they'll do it all again around 4:45 for the Unbelievable. VIPs. Unbelievable. Dude. As, as a man who has donned a yellow jersey and, and done a player dance with Maceo, I guarantee <laughs> you he can teach you some moves. Yeah, I need to, I need to learn hour. some. Look at him right now. Yeah. He's doing his best Miley Cyrus impersonation. And the playlist is exceptional. Yes. The playlist is exceptional. Good for all ages. That's our guy Shark, our resident DJ and PA announcer. What a finish from Maceo there. Payoff pitch coming to Haas. Lined into left field. He's two for two. Bill kind of had a delayed steal on the pitch. He's going to be content at second base. Back-to-back -back base knocks for the Bananas. This is only the fourth time on the tour that they've been the away team out of 41 games. So you're seeing a very unique ball game tonight, Thomas. Yeah. Normally they get all the walk-offs, but party animals, thanks to Jake Skoll defeating Dan Obers 9-5 in the home run derby pregame. Okay, so I'm new to this. Are, yes. Where are the party animals from? They currently without a home is <laughs> Breland with the laser beam home. No chance for Vava to get a tag on Bill though. That was a heck of a throw from the Stylin Hawaiian. Three straight singles for the Nanners and Dalton Malden. And the hometown kid with the base knock. Oh my goodness gracious. And all the bananas have a drink in their hand. A celebration. The dude in the cowboy hat. What's his name? Cowboy Kyle Lewis. Yeah, cowboy. Okay. <laughs> dude. And the guy and the guy on the stilts. Yes, Dakota All Britain. Okay, gotcha. How about Dalton? Now, I don't know if you have ever crossed paths with Dalton Malden, but less than a month ago. Second baseman for the Bananas, who just had that RBI single as we get to the top of the order and DR Meadows will swing away. Signed a writing and publishing deal with Big Machine. You know a little something about did that. Did he really? He did. That guy right there. The guy on first base. On just, first base. Just had the line drive single. Dude, that's incredible. I, I'm going to have to meet him, dude. Yes, you do. Where's he from? 
originally from Florida, but from Florida. spent right. three years at Trevecca Nazarene here in Nashville and has called Nash Vegas home ever since. That's amazing. He ought to, he ought to start singing a song at first base. So Plug I'm, him up. Let him play. I'm sure we'll uh, we'll get some music from Dalton tonight. <laughs> he sang pregame. Oh, that was him singing uh, for the Phil Collins song. Yes, <laughs> correct. Dude. The, uh, the drum fill on the snare. <laughs> I, I was like, we're, we're, in, we're in for a heck of a night. I love it. EJ fouls that off out of the stadium. What do you think about fans being able to catch foul balls for outs, as we saw <laughs> Dude, tonight? Dude, I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> whoever, whoever came up with the rule book of this game, stealing first base might be my favorite rule on the planet. EJ one for two tonight with the double. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got selfies going on. Let's all get in here. Come on. Here we go. Boom. Yeah, this is a 50% glass broadcast booth, so we're one with the fans. We are one. It's a pretty cool experience. 2-2 Two -two count now on EJ, the Nanner's first baseman. Is there a team choreographer? So Maceo does a lot of it. Zach Frangelo, the director okay, gotcha. of entertainment, has a degree in dance from UNLV, so he gets in on the action a lot. Dude, you know what's amazing is that there literally is never a lull, period. Maybe it's just the music, but even even this uh, this guy standing up on the on the dugout up here, yes. he never quits. Super Bruce, this is ball four. Now a sprint will ensue. Hosley will score easily. Malden racing for a first and round third. He's going to score as well. A two-run, <laughs> two-base sprint for Eric Jones. Oh, my gosh. And the Bananas have three runs now in the top of the fourth. And you've got to love the base running aggression from Eric Jones. He's trying to get in scoring position so the Bananas, they can get another knock or another ball for a sprint and play four runs here in this ball game. He grabs his 29th and 30th stakes on the tour. First Banana to reach the 30 plateau is uh -oh. Michael Deeb. Lines it over the head of Skoll. EJ scores easily. Deeb's coasting into second. He's going to go right through it. Stand up double for the Bananas left fielder. And four runs now in the top of the fourth for the good guys in Banana Land. Former Chicago White Sox product with his second three bagger of the tour. Now Dan Oberst. And Josh, this is the first time we've seen the Bananas touch up Sean Fluke in a long while. Yeah, Sean Fluke entering the game with a 208 opponent's batting average. Is this is going to go to a fan? Oh, and it's almost <laughs> caught. <laughs> bobble. Deflected. Yes, yeah, we can't have bobble catches in Banana Land or else things would just get too wild for these umpires. <laughs> but that was an excellent job on the tip drill, snagging the bouncer in the hat. Now, Thomas, how confident do you feel in your ability to catch a foul ball? Uh, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Glove or no glove? No glove, baby. No glove. Wow, yeah. look Why at not? you. Yeah, I'm going to go sit out there in just a second and see if I can't snag one. Oh, natural. I'd probably break a finger or two, but it'd be worth it for the out, you know? Now, listen, this is only our third world tour we did. One city in 2021, seven cities last year. Now we're in the midst of a 33-city run. Uh, That's incredible. Dan Hober steps out. Yeah, things escalated quickly in Banana Land. Chase Acuff with a trick play as the bleeding is stopped at just four runs for the Bananas. But as a man who has headlined six different tours and has been a part of a plethora of others, how do you survive it? <laughs> <laughs> you mean the road? Correct. <laughs> Dude, what are we doing? Oh, we're we going got a over here. camera, okay. yeah. Bring it up to the booth. Oh, we're going up to the booth. Yeah. So you, you figure out how to get your rest sparingly. Dude, I, I feel like I get more rest on the road than I do at home. I've got four kids <laughs> under the age of seven, so when I get on the bus, it's like it's it's rest time minus the show. So, yeah, it, so you all have how many how many games this, this season? 87 games. 87 games. Okay. Yeah. All over the country? All over the country. Anything out of the country? No. We it call might it, be time. We call it a world tour for at what it's going to be. At least up into Canada. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we would like to visit our friends in the Great White Why not? North. Why not? You, you fooled around up there? Yeah, I, pl I, pl I played in Canada in February. Ooh. 
the coldest I've ever been in my entire existence. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little different than Valdosta. Uh, a little different than Valdosta, that's right. Yeah, I'm not too big on the cold. Where, where would you say is the coolest place you've ever gotten to play? Uh, man, I think getting to headline Madison Square Garden was probably the cool. I mean, that'll do. <laughs> it was it was wild, man. Walking down the hallways and seeing just all the the Stones played here, the Beatles played here, Zeppelin played here. I mean, it's just like it's so iconic, and all, my whole family got to come up there with me to watch that show, and uh, that was a that was a pivotal moment for me for sure. Now, what's the chance at some point in uh, this wild world we live on we live in that? You get some kind of collaboration with the bananas, maybe a little music, a halftime show. Can we show? please? <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, I would I would come to Savannah to rehearse for a whole day to make it happen. That would <laughs> I, like count me for real in. That would be Rhett that would be amazing. Show coming soon. That's right. Let's go. Or halftime show. Or half make yeah, halftime show. Yeah. We've only had one halftime show in Banana Ball history, and it was uh, just like 13 guys banging on drums incredible. in the One City World Tour. It was incredible. It was very different than the show that you would bring. Uh, Thomas, I can't thank you enough for popping up in the booth. Thank you all man. so much, man. I want to uh, free you and let you experience the rest of this for thing sure. with your family, but this has been a lot of fun. For sure, man. Thank you all so much. Thomas, great Appreciate it. Yeah. Banana fans, love you all. There goes Thomas Rhett. He's got more number one hits on Billboard than you could ever dream of. Biko, very nice to meet you, Thomas. So we're in Savannah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big time. Big time. Have a great night, Thomas. There goes Mr. Rhett as Breland has an 0-1 count on him. Kyle with four runs of support here in the fourth. After getting none in the first, one in each of the second and third. He threw up zeros in the first and second and lost the one run lead in the third. That's why we're tied at a point apiece. How about us just inking Thomas Rhett to a halftime or post game show of a bananas game? I'll tell you what, man. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not going to stop smiling the rest of this broadcast. That, man, there's a lot of good energy coming from Mr. Thomas Rhett. Yeah, that's, that's a good dude right there. Strikeout of Breland. And an emphatic call for Vincent Chapman as Bill Leroy shadows him. Almodova, one for two now on the night. Third K for Cowboy Kyle. Chase Acuff on a hop to his counterpart at short. Ryan Cox bounces it off the dirt up to a bare hand. Fantastic trick play, the 64th and 67 tries for the Glove Magician. Banana ball or basketball there for Ryan Cox? I'm not quite sure either way. That was a stellar trick play. And Jason Swan is, we get a look at the replay there. So nice, you get to see it twice. As the largest money shower that we've seen on the tour thus far. For everybody keeping track at home. That one knifed towards right field. Sliding stop, Dalton Malden from his tush. Over to first. Magical play from the songbird of our generation. The Nanners flash the leather in the fourth. They win the inning, four runs to zip. And take a 2-1 lead in the all-important points category. And now it's time for some Copperhead Road. Josh, you've got this thing down, man. Yeah, that's the only one I know, but so I enjoy doing the Copperhead Road when I get to. It's a pretty simple one. <laughs> that's why I know it. Okay, as you get another look at the tumbling play from Dalton Malden, we'll pop it up into the broadcast booth. It is mail time. Mail time. It's for all my Blues Clues fans out there. Uh, this is a nice little love note for Biko and Josh. It says, you guys rock. We love you. It's a really nice intro. And then look at this, just a beauty. That is from 
our man Ava and Roxy. To all the bananas and animals, me and my mom love watching your videos on YouTube and learning your dances on TikTok. So we were wondering, will you ever come and play in the UK? Because I would love to watch one in person. My biggest dream is that I wish that I had a signed yellow baseball from all the bananas. You guys really make me smile. Lots of love from Ava and Roxy. P.S. We got some of your merch. That warms the heart right there. Thank you so much, Ava and Roxy. Uh, that is a demand that we can certainly acquiesce to. Yeah, the bananas are going to be thrilled to get you guys a ball. And, you know, you never know. Canada, the UK, we, we could have a couple stops on a, a couple world tours in the future. And a really nice note from Mom here as well. We really appreciate it. That was uh, one that fired us up anytime we get to chat with our friends from across the pond. It, it's pretty special. And for me as well, it's worth mentioning that I received a nice letter from Sally Atkinson congratulating me on my graduation recently. Sally, I appreciate your card very much and your kind words. Really appreciate you all. That is a lot of fun getting to open up the fan mail. Dakota McFadden in the five hole for the Bananas leading off the top of the fifth inning. A little less than 52 minutes on our clock. Still five innings to go. Emac sends that a mile high to shallow right. Skull can't see it. Skull doesn't know where it is. No, he's underneath it. He was just deking us. Good fun, good fun from Jake there. And Demac 0 for 2. Had a one-base sprint, was pinch run for by Malachi Mitchell his first time. Who then ended up scoring in his stead. And this is a Scary moment. We don't know what happened to Dakota McFadden. But he's down on a knee at home plate. Francis, the Fans First Entertainment athletic trainer, checking on him. And he's walking gingerly, but under his own power, back to the dugout. And this is... Been a tough night for injuries. Garrett Delano left an out into the third inning. And now DMAC. Not liking what happened to his body right there here in the top of the fifth. Sean Fluke, the exterminator, still on the bump. Wow, Jackson Olsen just absolutely turned on that. And Adam Virant saw his life flash before his eyes. And Adam Byron going down to a knee too. Randy Boss doing the right thing and checking on Coach Byro out there. Look at him, he's gonna give the fans a tip of the cap. That ball lifted to right, Skull once again underneath it. Once again making the catch. Good start to the top of the fifth inning for Fluke and company. Now Ryan Cox in the seventh spot. One for two, RBI single back in the second inning. Popped out to the leaping barehanded trick play from Dustin Baber his last time up. Good frame there by Vava to steal strike one. Backdoor bender. Beautiful. Goal on his horse is going to make all three plays here in the top of the fifth inning. First one, two, three inning for Fluke tonight. And only his second full inning that he's gotten to throw. And as we honor all the military members, both past and present, here in a full capacity, First Horizon Park, we send that to everybody at home as well. Then we pop up into the broadcast booth. Biko Scala, Josh Tulevsky, the hands of our coordinating producer, Chad Reese. It is time to spin the wheel of unfortunate here in Nash Vegas. Do jumping jacks for an inning. Oh, God, that is 
Just brutal. Yeah, that is brutal. Now, I've got two spins this inning because I neglected to do mine the last time we did the Wheel of Unfortunate. Okay, do the Macarena for a batter. It's the first one. Fair enough. And other picks. Oh, I don't like. Don't, don't make me do. Okay, I'm okay. not even that. Let's see. Yeah, you don't want to tell me what you don't want, buddy. Yeah, that's right. Let's hey, how about you give out some gift memberships? Oh, that would be pretty that'd nice. Be, that'd be really the nice people, of you. The people would really enjoy that. All right, five gift memberships. How can oh. I not be a man of the people? Really good stuff. The Wheel of Unfortunate. Always an exciting spin. You're doing great. Thanks, man. I mean, my aerobics is not what they once were when I was at the peak of my powers in probably my senior year of high school. It's been all downhill since. Now, now, what do you think's the the greatest uh, number of jumping jacks you've ever done? Like Ooh. in a time, in in one go round. I've definitely done a hundred. Probably, maybe I've done. I'm starting to feel the effects of the constant jumping and jacking. Vava popped out to a fan his first time. That's how the Bananas won the second inning, one run to zip. Runners were on the corners with two down. Payoff pitch now coming. As Cowboy Kyle trying to splish splash, take a bath. Bouncer to the left side. Cox calls off Olsen between the legs. Laser beam throw. EJ tried to slap a tag down on Vava, but Randy Voss is going to say that he missed it. And that looks like an infield single to Biko. That's an infield single for sure. Okay. Pause my jack part of the jumping and jacks to write in my scorebook, and then we'll continue on. Dustin Baber. One for one on the night. Start of the five hit, two run bottom of the third inning with a line drive base knock as fastball fired right behind his keister. And Bill Leroy will take the express route back to his spot behind the dish. He's right between Dustin's legs, hops him as he quickly reties his right cleat. And we're ready for a 1 0 offering. Man, by my advanced metrics, I'd say you're doing, uh, mm, let me recalibrate here. Okay. Trying to get an idea of the pace I'm going at here. Yeah. I think you can do, I mean, you're, you feel like you're at one a second right now, but I think you could be doing more. I think I'm a little quicker than one a second. I feel like I'm one like every point eight seconds. Danny Hosley throws the cowboy hat away, grabs the ball. And one down here in the bottom of the fifth. Oh! Just punched my pen against the wall. That was to right. Okay, we're back to the action. Reese Hampton at the top of the order. Switch hitting center fielder, two for two tonight. Six for seven in Nashville. Way to get in on the fun. Got to. You, Sam Claycamp, Jake Lealios, and Dylan Porter. <laughs> Sounds like a party to Biko. It's good to see Vincent Chapman moving and grooving behind the dish once again. That one out of the stadium. No chance for a fan. That one out onto third Ave. Two one from Cowboy Kyle. Lined into the Hampton shift. Vava's doubled off first. And what a way for Biko to stop doing jumping jacks. Goodness gravy. Boy, you owe Dalton Malden a handshake after the game. How about Reese Hampton? 
Now six for eight on the door, but seven for eight in barrels. That was a good piece of lumber. Live by the barrel, barrel die by the barrel. That's what they say. It's what happened to the bananas in Kansas City. As you get another look at it. Murphy, happy to hear that you've been in on the wrestling game, coaching and officiating. Mr. Sexy Sex. Brian, you could have seen him at Rippy's Honky Tonk last night, blaring it away, turning a five-piece band into a sixer. But now you get him on the broadcast, just in case you missed that performance. I mean, this guy's, this guy's a pro. Got his own jam band up in Athens, Georgia. Go dogs. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Brian's, uh, Brian's looking to hit the town once again and, uh, you know, play at a bar. Kid Rock's place tonight, isn't that right, Brian? Yeah, I think that's where we're going to try to hit up tonight, see if we can get a couple bands to <laughs> accept on it. <laughs> Good, Brian. How y'all doing tonight, boys? Oh, my gosh. Never better, buddy. Never better. Yep. How about the scene in Nashville? This is your kind of town, huh? I love it, man. I've had a lot of friends of mine up here playing in Nashville. i got a lot more coming to Nashville, so it's one of my favorite cities on the planet. Beautiful music, beautiful people. Brett Helton, the new man on the mound for the party animals. You see what he's done across 30 and two-third innings thrown. A 305 average MPI. That is by far the best on the tour. It does own a bar, Happy Tap, in Colorado Springs. It's going to be 8, 9, 10 for the Bananas. Bill Leroy, Danny Hosley, and Dalton Malden. Due to swing it here in the bottom. Check that. Party Animals are home. Top of the sixth inning. Good work, Biko. By the way, you talk about Brett El Helton leading the tour in MPI. How about his last eight completed innings? They've all been under three minutes. It's incredibly impressive. He's on a tear. Brian, before you get back to jamming, man, can you just tell me how you can meet five guys for the first time in your life, two on a guitar, one on a bass, one on the keyboard, as A Cuff across the diamond takes care of Bill Leroy for out number one. Bill now one for three on the night with a run scored. How you can just magically gel with them instantly and all of a sudden you're making sweet tunes? Well, there's just something about being a musician, and especially in a musician's town. Uh, all musicians are connected by this just weird gel that keeps us together. It's just like, you're a musician, I'm a musician, let's get together and let's make something great. So it doesn't take a lot of convincing. No, it was, it was a pretty immaculate sight. Okay, Brian, we'll just let you keep boogieing, dude. Sounds good to me, man. Six two two from the party animals there is Brian Blair's away behind Josh and I. Vinny Derubius getting a pinch hit opportunity here and goes down swinging. Looked like a nasty two seamer. And two down here in the top of the sixth inning. Yeah, great piece of pitching by Brett Helton. And once again, he's on a great pace. Possibly another minutes per inning mark under two minutes here. Dalton Malden into the stands and the fans in his adopted home of Nashville do not retire him. It's one for two on the night, an RBI single and a run scored. Gives the fans another chance and this time they got him. Dalton Malden in the city he lives in betrayed by the Nashville faithful. Yeah, that's that's what they say, uh, that's what they call playing with fire. Here's Jesse Cole. Getting a new microphone with Zach Frangelo helping. Here we go. You want 
to talk about a heck of a surprise. How about Barry Zito? Coming in for the bananas here to pitch the bottom of the sixth inning. Yeah, this lanky lefty spent 15 years in Major League Baseball, had quite the success. A Cy Young Award winner with the Moneyball A's in 2002. And by the way, won actually two World Series, 2010 and 2012, with that early 2010's Giants dynasty. Yeah, in 2012, he was superb all throughout the playoffs, out dueled Justin Verlander in game one of the World Series. As you get a look at the highlights. Let's go back to 2012, why don't we? That's a Hall of Famer right there being struck out by Barry. Miguel Cabrera going down. And it's that nasty patented curveball. He's always had a pretty beefy arsenal, but the curve, the patented pitch. And what's more, he got a base hit off of Justin Verlander in game one of the World Series and an RBI to boot. I mean, Barry Zito, he could swing it, he could throw it. I mean, a man of many talents. Bringing in Brandon Belt. The boy's fired up about it. He says, calm down. I'm a career 108 hitter. I can take care of things. And Zito was lights out in that game one in San Francisco. And now he comes in with no runs of support. So if the party animals can score a run off of the 15-year MLB vet, then they will win the inning and tie the game at two points each. Brian, Mr. Sexy Sax, I cannot thank you enough for regaling us with your beautiful music, my friend. Anytime. Anytime, guys. I love playing for y'all. Well, I'm sure you've got a busy night out there, so we'll free you and let you go do what you do best, but we really appreciate you, Brian. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for having me out here, man. Great seeing you, Brian. Look forward to this. Look forward to doing a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens tonight in the birthplace of country music. Sexy Sacks exits, Barry Zito enters. And what a matchup. It's two, three, and four here in the Party Animals lineup. Jake Skoll, one for two on the night. First round draft pick by the Texas Rangers back in 2010 against the ninth overall pick by the Oakland Athletics. That was back in 1999. See what happens when you put a ninth overall pick against a 15th overall pick. Skull five years in the Rangers organization, two more with the Yankees. Zito, 15 years in Major League Baseball. Eight with the Oakland Athletics, seven with the San Francisco Giants. See the gift subs going crazy in the chat. Thank you so much for your generosity, for your fellow BTV viewer. Here's the big bender. Skull watches it drift out of the zone. Count is full. The dangerous Bryson Bloomer waits on deck. Four straight shakes from Zito before he throws a fastball foul tipped and Bill Leroy can't squeeze it. Yeah, that's really tough. Bill Arroy would have liked to have had that one. Now we'll see if Barry Zito rips off one of his signature curveballs with the count still full on Skull. Heater is high, and the battle of superhuman athletes ends with Skull getting a sprint. He is on his horse. The Bananas trying to get it around to all seven fielders behind Barry and Bill before Skull gets to second. And that is not going to be a possible job for the Nanners defense. Jake has his tour leading 25th ball four sprint. And the inning winning run in scoring position for Bryson Bloomer. He's already driven in a run with a line drive single here tonight. Kyle Lewigs, by the way, goes five innings of two run work as Bloomer plunked for his tour high seventh time. Breaks a tie with Chase Acuff. And Brayson and his entire Party Animals team are going to Michael Jackson beat it. The 90 feet from home to first, or at least a good chunk of it.
For all intensive purposes, Bloomer doesn't really matter at first. That's a pretty strategic hit by pitch for Barry Zito. Now you get a four set, first, second, and third. And are back to lefty on lefty with Dalton Cornett. That one back at Barry. Ryan Cox steps on second, throws to first. Huge 6-3 double play. A twin killing when Zito needed it most. And that was a great play. Ryan Cox thought about going with a trick play there, but instead knew that the situation was you can't allow any runs in this inning. Went to the bag at second, a strong throw over to EJ, and now Barry gets another lefty up at the plate to try and see if he can escape this jam. Tanner Thomas takes the one. It's a curveball that rivals Bill Lee's Leafus. Tanner one for two. Walked off the third inning with a line drive base hit. First walk off of his banana ball career. And only his fourth game playing as the home team. And that one lifted towards shallow left. Deeb's going after it. Can he get there? No. It dinks in. Skull will score. And the party animals walk off the sixth inning on Barry Zito. They tie the game at two points each. And a rave ensuing at home plate. I know this fans here dance some pizza. Where are my pizza fans at? Tanner Thomas ties Breland Almodova and Reese Hampton for the Party Animals team high with his second walk-off on the tour, second walk-off of the night. He's responsible for both the points the Party Animals have scored. Josh Talevsky, Biko Scala, welcome back into the broadcast booth. It is that time of the night. We are giving away a pair of hokas. You have to click the link in the description or the link in the comment section, fill out the form, and put in the buzzword hot chicken. Hot, H-O-T, space, chicken, C-H-I-C-K-E-N. Man, oh man, I love hot chicken. There's nothing you should eat more in Nashville than hot chicken. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Perfect. Hot chicken. So we're giving away Hoka's every game on this tour. You'll find out the winner on the post-game show tonight, so stay tuned to find out if you are the lucky folk going away with a pair of Hoka's. Thanks to our good friends over at Zappos. Loving every one of the 87 games on this 2023 Banana Ball World Tour. And we have three more innings in the books. 2-2 two -two game. Tennessee is on the line if the Bananas can win it. Are you not entertained, Josh? It has been a phenomenal game. Once again, Kyle Lewigs will earn a no decision. He will not pick up the win here against the Party Animals. But the Bananas, they're going to get to go to work against Brett Helton. They had a walk-off against him the last time he came out. It was Dan Oberst with an opposite field home run against him in Tulsa. We'll see if the Bananas can get another point on the board here in the seventh. A one count on DR Meadows. Brett Helton in his second inning of work. It's the top of the bananas order. DR lines that one to right. Skull drifting over. And makes the catch. DR one for carry the one. Three on the evening. And now it'll be Eric Jones. about Barry Zito singing an original over at third. Let's listen in. EJ blasts it deep to right center. That one off the Vanderbilt health sign on a fly. Head first dive into second base. Jones second double of the night, sixth on the tour. And another great piece of hitting from Eric Jones. We saw him pull a double down the line earlier in this ball game. Now he goes the opposite way with a great smash. Pinch run four by Malachi Mitchell, who gets his third trip on the bases tonight. So far has scored twice. And how about this concert? Barry Zito, who played a good chunk of his 2015 season with the Nashville Sounds when they were the AAA affiliate of the A's. Right at home. 
here in Athens of the South. Michael Deeb, talk about a barrel out to right center, racing after it. Reese Hampton doesn't have a chance. Malachi is going to score easily from second. And Vitamin Deeb adding a double to a powerful evening. He's now two for three. He had an RBI triple his last time. And right when we talked about earlier in this ball game, Michael Deeb wanting to hit for more extra base hits, he comes away with a triple and now a double. Some runs batted in for him. It's been a solid night for the Bananas left fielder. That's his eighth two-bagger of the tour. Dan Oberst blasts it to dead center. Hampton, oh my goodness! Oh, it looked like he almost made a stupendous catch. I think he might have lost the ball when he crashed into the wall 403 feet away. Michael Deeb scores from second, back-to-back -back doubles for the Bananas. And we hope Reese Lightning is okay. Look at this, oh man, he just barely missed it. Was going full steam ahead. Ball glanced off the glove and then he collided at full velocity straight into the wall. Good to see Dakota McFadden still in the EH spot. Flew out to right his last time, part of a 0 for 2 evening with the one base sprint. And ended up down at a knee in the box, but walked back to the dugout under his own power with Francis, the Bananas athletic trainer, and he's back and better than ever. That ball lifted out to right, Skull backpedaling. Will grab it, Ober's trying to tag from second to third. Beautiful throw from Skull, but cut off by Aka. And a man now on third base with two down. And that's good base running from Dan Oberst. What that tells me is two things. One, Dan's hamstring feeling much better since Kansas City. And two, the Bananas trying to score runs as much as they can. Now up three runs in this inning with the Jackson Olsen single. They know the party animals bats know how to swing it, especially late in a ball game. Every run's gonna count in an inning when they know the party animals can just as well score three runs on the bottom half of the seventh. Can't keep Jackson Olsen out of the hit party for long. Chase Acuff tracks down the pop from his counterpart, Ryan Cox. And Coxie, one for four on the night. RBI single his first time. But as Josh just mentioned, the Bananas with lightning speed rack up three runs on Brett Helton and the party animals and have a good chance to take the lead that they have had two different times tonight. As you get a look at Jake Skull in the field, he has gotten a lot of action in right. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but five opportunities in right. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to keep going all night long. Got some crowd karaoke going on here in First Horizon Park. Party Animals need three runs to win the inning. Check that, three to tie it, four to win it. And let's listen in to the full capacity crowd. innings rather of two run work by Kyle Lewis. It'll go as four and two thirds in the book since he was walked off on in the third inning. Here's Christian Dearman.
Wow. It was going to be the first pitch of the inning. Ryan Cox is not relinquishing the mound, and that ball cranked wow. just foul. Cox, he wants the whole at bat. It's about an 85 foot pitch, and he takes it off of Breland's helmet. And Mr. Romadova is going to chase Cox back to shortstop. Mayhem to start the bottom of the seventh inning for the party animals. Yeah, Ryan Cox trying to take something out of Kyle Lewick's book, and that one just kind of backfired, as you can see here. A solid clunk on the helmet there for Breland. Third time on the tour, the Stylin' Hawaiian has been hit by a pitch. And now a sidearm delivery to the sidearm specialist, Chase Acuff. Only an inning and two-thirds on the mound in the books for the party animal shortstop thus far. But when he's out there, 100% of his pitches coming from that low arm angle. Dearman likes to mix it up. A little three-quarters, a little sidearm. Oh, drop real low down when he... He's feeling extra frisky. So far, can't find the zone against Acuff. 3-0. Misses the outside corner. Dearman can't believe the call from Vincent Chapman. It's going to have to. Nanders get it around the infield. Now to their three outfielders deep, the seventh and final man who had to touch it on the sprint. Almodova goes first to third. And all of a sudden, a lot of goofing around. Felt like the Bananas were cruising to a seventh inning victory with three runs of support, tying run in the box. And a reminder that hot chicken is our buzzword on the Hocus giveaway. Hot chicken, it will end at the end of this half inning. I want to eat some hot chicken after this game, Biko. As do I, Josh. Sounds pretty delightful. That one gets the top of the zone. Jason Swan does not agree with that decision. First strike of the night from Deerman. And that one right down the middle. Not what Swanee was looking for at all. He's caught. Looking in the box. Big first out for Mr. Electric. Mike Vivesis, the player coach. Front door bender misses the corner. And another amazing guest in the booth. It is none other than the 15-year MLB vet, the two-time World Series champion and signing award winner, Mr. Barry Zito. How we doing, boys? Great, dude. Good, good, man. What a what a pleasure it is out here. My gosh. You having a good time tonight? This is epic. Yeah, I don't even know what to think. I'm, I'm on the high right now. <laughs> I hear you there, man. This is game 41 for us on the tour, and I don't think we've gotten used to the madness yet at all. <laughs> Going to be a 2-1 pitch coming to Vava. Dearman looking to get some dirt on that hand. Vasis pops it into shallow center. Malden with the call and the catch. And from first and third with no outs to first and third with two gone. Big moment here for Dustin Baber, who represents the inning tying run. Really just shows you how good Deerman is when he can lock in, getting away from the entertainment side of the game and back into the baseball, getting that strikeout, and there the pop-up for Mike Favasis. Dustin Baber will take the baton. Uh, the entertaining, he chugs a beer out of a boot and will kick his way into the box. He's one for two with a single and a run scored. Now, Barry, what was it like being out there in the center of the circus on the mound, man? Amazing. Having haven't thrown full speed in seven years, and I'm just shocked that I got someone out. So You look dynamite having a, out there. Having a great time, man. Yeah, I've been sitting in a chair doing music since I retired. <laughs> so. That's a barrel to center, but D.R. Meadows is under it, will make the snag. And the Bananas win the seventh inning, three runs to nothing. Come on. Take a three to two lead in the all important points category. And with about 18 minutes left, in the ball game, they lead by a point for the third time tonight. I can't hear myself. Check, 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 check. All right, we'll pop on the camera in the booth here so we can get Barry's beautiful mug in on the action. Perfect. 
And as you get a gander at First Horizon Park, welcome into the broadcast booth, Biko, Josh, and Barry. Uh, so what has your first Bananas experience been like, man? Oh, just incredible. I'm high on adrenaline right now. I've never pitched and <laughs> gone and played the guitar. Those are two sides of my life that just both got blended perfectly in all about 10 minutes of time. Kind of feels like, just much like Bronson Arroyo and Jake Peavy, you're the perfect guy for banana ball. Yeah, this is all me, man, especially here in Nashville. I mean, I came out here from Cali when I played for The Sound seven years ago and retired and never went home. Music City, I mean, they got the guitar scoreboard out here. It's a great night. Now, what was that like playing a lot of time in 2015 here in the inaugural season of First Horizon Park? I've it's a pretty magnificent venue for baseball and banana ball. Incredible. A special year for me. I played 14 years in, you know, in the majors and kind of had a love-hate situation at the end there. So I really rediscovered my love for baseball coming here. And it just makes total sense that I would come out here right now and rediscover it again seven years later. So what's it like to spend time with the bananas? I mean, what have you picked up from your experience so far interacting with fans, going through the plaza, things like that? You know, honestly, the level of baseball is shockingly good. That's the thing. Uh, you just these guys are studs. I'm in there taking pictures of the guys' arms because they're six eight, you know, <laughs> two fifty, rock solid. I mean, we got a guy down there that was a linebacker for Notre Dame, and I'm just like going, okay, this is no like walk in the park here. I'm kind of scared to pitch right now. And you got thrown into the fire <laughs> against the guy who was a safety at the University of Georgia after seven years of minor league ball, 15th overall pick in 2010. Oh my gosh, I was so close to striking him out too. I know. I thought, and then of course we had the walk, which is really a double in bananas baseball. Yes. So. Yeah. Well, the foul tip into the man in the box's mitt that just barely ejected itself out of it as Bill taps this one to the left side. Chase Acuff with the seat across the diamond. One pitch, one out for Brett Helton in his third inning of work tonight. If Bill just could have squeezed that puppy. Come on. Could have been a different world we live in today. Oh, man. Still on a high. It doesn't even matter. That's a beautiful part about Bananas Baseball, man. Now that's the core of it right there. It is. Win or lose, and as you can tell, being in the Bananas dugout, these guys really want to win as Vinny DeRubius, 0 for 1 on the night with a K, pops it. Bryce and Bloomer, oh. tumbling catch. How'd he hang on to that puppy? Thought he was going to have to jetson himself into the third base dugout. Ends up about facing and snagging it, and here comes Jesse Cole. The world's tallest hitter. Oh, man. <laughs> Please welcome. Here we go. Dakota Stilts Albritton. <laughs> so epic. Is this real? <laughs> and here comes the 10 foot, 9 inch tall Dakota Stilts Albritton in the box for home plate umpire Vincent Chapman to be able to see his strike zone. Wow. Now, what may surprise you about Dakota, as you look at his lower third there, a 308 batting average. He has really taken a leap. He's my number one pick for most improved player now in his third world tour. He is four for 13. And has a 1-1 count on him here. And about as clutch as they come to, he's got three walk-offs for the Bananas this season. Does he really? And that's a line drive you gotta to be left kidding field. Me. You've got to be kidding me right now. Oh my gosh, absolutely lace that baseball. <laughs> Barrel machine here in the 2023 tour. I mean, you cannot script that. That isn't, jeez. And the Bananas wanted to pinch run Malachi Mitchell for him. Sean Fluke was telling Malachi he can't go out there. This is the fifth time through the order for the Bananas. So he actually could have with DR at the dish, but anyhow, still gets to run the bases. That hasn't happened on the tour so far. That one, a homer in an elevator shaft. Unfortunately, we're on a baseball field for DR and Mike Vavasis oh. can't find it. Another life for the Bananas center fielder. As a pitcher, what's going through your mind as you see one hit a mile high in the infield? You're thinking this is an automatic out right here. Yes. That's the thing is you got to just not think that because you don't want to get down after it when you got to throw more strikes to this next hitter. DR one for four on the evening. Nice bender getting the top of the zone from Helton. One two pitch. And Brett is going to free that beautiful mane of hair he's got. <laughs> Time for some headbanging. 
The Pittsburgh Pirates ninth round pick from 2015. Gives up a single to left from DR, who's two for five on the night. Still trying to get to second. Oh. He's not going to get there. A 7-4 fielder's choice because the Bananas could not execute the pinch run there with Malachi Mitchell and boos raining from the crowd. Not happy with the party animals' actions. Tough break for DR, who ends up one for five on the night. Let's take another look at Bryson Bloomer's catch right on the edge of the Bananas' dugout. The Darubius pop. Bloomer eyeing up what he's going to have to do and then tumbles backwards. That's a heck of a play. Man. <laughs> Into the bucket of balls. That's what fans don't understand is actually on foul balls, those balls come back into the field. So the Bananas fail to score in the top of the eighth inning. Party Animals just need one run in the bottom of the eighth to tie the game at three points each. And you get a look at First Horizon Park turning yellow. This is one of the more magical scenes you get in Banana Land. Incredible. My gosh. I guess the uh, no phones in the dugout's not a rule here. No, not at all. Okay. It's as, it's as many <laughs> technological devices as you'd like down there, especially if you're using them to create some content. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's a reel right there, isn't it? Now, Barry, you said this is one of the wilder environments that you've ever been in. How does it compare to Game 5, 2012 in the NLDS? Oh, incredible, man. Incredible. This is uh, this is a whole other situation where you can actually enjoy your time out there. A lot of times, you know, we're out there playing in the big leagues, and, you know, we're so focused, I wouldn't say that we can completely enjoy uh, the experience. So out here, well, you are focused too, but you're having a little more fun, and I think that's what uh, we all got into this great game for, having some fun. Now, how did we get lucky enough to be blessed with your presence here in Banana Land tonight, man? You know, a friend of mine hit me up and said there's an impossible ticket, but I'm going <laughs> to see if you can get it. And uh, I made a few calls, called my boy Eric Burns. Yeah. Burns, he hooked me up with Viro. The A's connection. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're like three, four days out here. It was a last-minute panic button. All right. And, yeah, we moved some things around and made it happen for a birthday boy tonight. A guy named Bowie. Bowie Hobbs, and he's just in the dugout down there having a blast. All he ever wanted for his birthday was to go to a Bananas game. Let's go. And he is on his birthday hanging out in the dugout all night. So, wanted to be a part of that, man. Making dreams come true. That is beautiful. Matt Malatesta, the monster. The new man on the mound. The splitter specialist in 21 and a third frames thrown. Averaging just south of five minutes per inning tossed. Had a rough start to his 2023 tour has been excellent as of late and now Lathan the kid umpire out coaching the bases and Dakota Stilts Albritton grabs his about two and a half foot glove and will man first base looks like Eric Jones moves to second Dalton Malden out of the ball game as Stilts pinch hit for him top of the order for the party animals Reese Hampton switch hitting center fielder He's two for three on the night, six for eight on the tour. Check that, just in Nashville. And he'll fly it out to Michael Deeb, who goes behind Ooh. the back. Trick play, he's now four for six on the tour. That was a doozy. That was a phenomenal catch in left field from Michael Deeb. We saw his last two trick play attempts, unable to come up with the snag. But here, in a tricky situation, <laughs> he's able to make the snag. That's a big first out for Matt Malatesta and the Bananas. Almost as impressive as his biceps. That's a fact. Saw him in the locker room. They're epic. There's your four-year man out of Notre Dame as a linebacker. Spent some time in the Chicago White Sox organization after two years at Bethune-Cookman playing baseball. And that was a gutsy play. Hampton represents the inning-winning run and is as fast as you're legally allowed to run in the great state of Tennessee. Now Jake Skull in the two-hole had the two-base sprint off of Barry. It was a great battle, 3-2 count. Fallon pitches off. And it's your first time out on the mound in seven plus years. It's never fun to see Jake Skull 60 feet at six inches away from you. <laughs> First header, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thrown into the fire. Another full count for the man out of Woodstock, Georgia. 
And then he takes the splitter low. Another sprint opportunity. He tests the banana's defense. To the outfield we go. Flip from Deeb to Vinny. Not in time. Still hadn't gotten in on the action yet either. I don't think they've practiced sprint defense with still down the field before. Has they ever thrown the guy out at second on that play? Many times. They have. So Many they've gotten times. that ball around in time. Oh, Maybe yeah. Maybe a slower run or something. The bananas have an elite sprint defense. Okay. It's unbelievable. Wow. But Skoll picks up his tour leading 26th ball for sprint. And now in scoring position for Bryson Bloomer. Third baseman in the three hole, one for two tonight. RBI single was plunked his last time up. We have to finish this inning in the six and a half minutes we have left if we want to play a ninth. One tapped foul, count two and one. Now Barry, how often are you breaking out the guitar and making music nowadays, man? Every day, nine to five, man. I'm actually producing now and started writing songs here when I retired, but been producing with artists now. So got my own studio, having an absolute blast, man. Well, it's pretty cool. I know that you've gotten to film parts of a couple music videos here in First Horizon Park. That's got to be pretty special. Oh, yeah. That one looped oh. over the head of Stilts. It's going to be a bloop base knock He's scoring. for ah. Bloomer. And Skull's going to score from second. Walk off the inning. How about it? Grayson Bloomer with his second inning ender on the tour. And here comes the young professor. With the party animals winning that inning, it is time to cast your gaze upon the scoreboard because we are heading to the ninth and final inning. The score is tied up now, three to three. Three to three now, tie game. What happens here in the final inning is every run counts for a point. Not only do you need to win the inning, you have to score the most runs. Each one will count to the overall score. What this is for the victory. The this is for all the marbles. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final inning. Got it. And if it's a ninth, they just play it out. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, time to introduce to you the ring dudes for tonight. Well, as you can see, the final inning rules with Cowboy Kyle Lewis presenting the last inning sign. However many runs are scored in the ninth count as points. It really doesn't matter for us this evening because it's a 3-3 three to three tie. So whoever scores more runs in the ninth is going to win it. Either way, you shake it out. And if we're tied after this ninth and final frame, we'll go to tiebreaker showdowns. Now, Barry, before we free you, because I would love to get you back in the crowd and, and hanging out with your family and friends and stuff, <laughs> I would be remiss if I did not ask you about the masked singer experience. That's yes. pretty wild. That was very wild. <laughs> yeah, looking through a rhino uh, helmet that I couldn't even see out of, yeah. singing live and trying to hit choreography cues was about the most challenging thing I'd ever done in my life. So uh, almost fell off the stage in rehearsal once. That would have been a lawsuit. Luckily, it didn't happen. <laughs> That's a riot. And made it to the final four. Oh, dude. I was thought I was going home the first weekend. <laughs> I was riding the icing of that cake for about two months, man. Tucker Perry, the new man on the mound. Okay, now before we free, I mean, I don't know the next time we're going to have Barry Zito in the booth. And I would love to know if you have any memories of growing up in Vegas with your parents working for Nat King, Nick King Cole and uh -huh. what that was like. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, I mean, you know, Nat actually died in the 60s before I was born, but I heard all the stories from my dad, and probably the coolest one is that Frank Sinatra and Nat King Cole both asked my dad to work for him, and my dad had to decide between one of the other, and he decided on Nat. So uh, I don't know why he passed Frank up, but he probably had good reason. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> a little Sophie's choice there. Two, three, four for the Bananas here in the top of the ninth. Eric Jones, Michael Deeb, and Dan Obers to swing it against the Submariner Tucker Perry, who has been great on this early tour, going no hat tonight. After usually just using whatever he wants out there on the bump. This one lifted to Jake Skoll, who makes his sixth out of the evening out there in right field. Jones now two for four on the night with two doubles, two RBIs, and two runs scored. All right, Barry, and, and now I'll truly let you go after this one. All right. How about moving to San Diego to focus on baseball and being trained by a former Cy Young Award winner? I mean, that's that's pretty insane. I remember going to this guy. His name was Randy Jones. Yes. We were taking pitching lessons when I was 12, and he would spit tobacco on my shoes when I would screw up. At 12 years old, at 12 years old, to see dirty brown tobacco on your shoes was pretty, uh, 
traumatic. Deep serves it to left. Breland Madova there Ooh. to collect out number two. Deep now two for four on the night with RBI doubles and triples. And Dan Oberst with an RBI double his last time. Let's go, boys. Two for four on the evening. Tucker Perry throwing the outs. Okay, well, we've got a first rounder in the building. We got a lot of affiliated guys. But you were drafted out of high school, then taken in the third round after your year in junior college, and then finally accepted your ticket to the majors when the A's took you ninth overall. How hard is it to say no to the majors in high school and then when you're a third round draft pick after two years of college? It's really hard, especially yeah. when they throw that money at you. <laughs> My dad was making the decisions then and uh, thank God he did because I had no better time than playing in Oakland, man. Uh, I would have been a Texas Ranger, which would have been fun. But yes. uh, coincidentally, ended up doing the best against the Rangers as, as any team in my career. And the, the scout that never signed me never lived it down. Let me tell you, I think I was like 17 and 1 against the Rangers or something crazy. Oh, yeah, drafted in 99, already getting a Cy Young in 2002. That was, that was a poor decision very quickly in your career. That's right, yeah. That was riding the highs early, man. That was the fun part about it is like, wait, what just happened? Okay, now go repeat it. Well, I don't know how. Yeah. <laughs> well, the all-star appearances came, and then the two World Series rings. I mean, the two of us are as big a baseball guys as you can find, and you're one of the legends of our childhood. So we can't, uh, can't thank you enough for popping up to the booth, Thank man. you so much, guys. It's great hanging with you guys. Great being a part of Bananas tonight, and uh, I'll keep my eyes peeled on what you guys are up to as we go. And we get a sprint here from Danny Oberst. He's going to eke out two bases as... Party Animals outfielders a little late to the party. Yes, they are. And Hope here with Dakota McFadden coming up to the dish. Base knocking, we get it, huh? That's a fact. Come on. And the Bananas want to pile on as many runs as they can here because they all count as points in our ninth and final inning. Dakota McFadden leads the tours with his leads the tour with his 14 walk-offs. Not a chance for one here. Only the fourth time on the season the Bananas have been the away team. Mm. That was a mighty hack. Mm -hmm. Now this is a big-time hitters uh, or pitchers park out here, so probably not going to see a lot of homers out here. This actually might be the first stop on the tour, at least the first stop in a while that we haven't had a long ball. Really? It is no surprise. I played here the year they opened this place, and our lineup was upset about it. <laughs> they couldn't believe that the owners built a place. Of course, you never know what the park's going to play like when you make a park. Right. So, but us pitchers, man, we were happy, happy. It's a lot more forgiving for you folks than old Herschel Greer Stadium. <laughs> Man, I never played there, but that place got condemned, and it was yeah. a very difficult situation. Yes. They've already knocked it down, too. Right. So. O2 line to right center. Ooh, that ball's driven. Hampton will get it on a hop. Ober scores from second, and DMAC fired up. Mayors lead the ball game for the fourth time tonight. They're up four points to three. That is a clutch piece of hitting from Dakota McFadden going down 0-2, fouling up another pitch from Tucker Perry, and then just taking that one to center field and dunking it in for the go-ahead single. Dakota McFadden batting 333 with runners in scoring position this season. You see exactly why there. Malachi Mitchell will get his fifth pinch running opportunity tonight. Get out there once oh, for the order. He's picked off. How about that, Barry? Woo! That might have been a balk. Just saying, I don't know if the umpire's looking at his front foot right there, because I think he deked him pretty good. We have had guys with a little little wiggle on that front foot. Uh, I don't know. A few times getting one by the umpires this year. Yeah, I think Malachi uh, had it right there, but. Well, the party animals, as the young professor is saying right here, need one run to tie the game and send it to showdowns, two runs to win it. Barry, I want to let you get back and enjoy this with the team, man. But thank you so much for thank popping you, up to the booth. Great time, guys. Great to meet you guys. Very great meeting you. We yes. will never forget that RBI single in game one of the World Series. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I love 
love it. Thank you so much, Barry. He still keeps the bat in his studio. Legend of the game. Who can, who can blame him? I would. Yeah. <laughs> That's legendary stuff. Speaking of legends, Mr. Danny Hosley, best pitcher on the tour by a long shot. In 35 innings, averaging four minutes and seven seconds per frame tossed, and a sparkling 1.75 ERA. Nobody else is south of four. It's been a video game tour thus far for Danny. And it's the ERA plus that really gets you. Uh, the league average is 100. Danny Hosley has a 328. ERA plus, he's more than three times better than the average banana ball pitcher. And by the way, he's been excellent in his save opportunities, recording saves in his last five. And he's looking to get his 10th out here on the mound, here in the bottom of the ninth. And he's nine for 10 in save opportunities on the tour. He's gonna have four, five, six for the party animals. Knee to the lineup. Dalton Cornett, Tanner Thomas, and Breland Almodova all due to swing it. Bananas have had one nothing, two to one, three to two, and now finally a four three lead tonight. The party animals simply will not go away. Nice heater on the outside corner for strike one. And there's a 12 six curve. Cornet had no idea where it went. His teammates wanted him to try and steal first base. It would have been a dangerous proposition as it kind of bounced back towards Bill. Yeah, friendly bounced towards Bill and Cornet, not the speediest base runner for the party animals. Probably a safe decision that he stay in the box there. But anytime you're facing Danny Hosley, you certainly do have to snag any possible opportunity that's presented. He had struck out a batter in 22 straight appearances before he threw a K-less, although perfect ninth inning an evening ago. It was quite surprising. Ground out and two flyouts for Danny Hosley. You know, he'll take the save any way he can get it at the end of the day. That's a fact. W's are W's. Hey, shout out Bucky Boo. The dingo in the chat was nervous about her softball game today, but won six nothing. Congrats, Becky Boo, the dingo, as Cornette goes down swinging. Only his eighth strikeout on the tour. That's tied with Chase Acuff for the least on the party animals. Actually still one better than Chase. And half of them have come against Danny Hosley. Yeah, it's unbelievable. We saw in one game this year, actually, Dalton Cornett, a strikeout in the ninth inning against Danny Hosley, then coming up against him again in showdowns, another strikeout, and it was nearly an identical pitch sequence. Fastball, 12-6 curve and change up. Three arrows in Hosley's proverbial quiver. And he has confounded party animals all tour long. With his deceptive delivery, low 90s heater. And as he gets the outside corner, pitcher's pitch on 3-0. Devastating breaking ball and a changeup, which he claims to be his best pitch. Hot shot to short. Ryan Cox between the legs, across the diamond, in time. And a trick play has the Bananas one out away from winning the state of Tennessee. And it doesn't matter how big the moment is, how critical a juncture in the game it is, Ryan Cox willing to go out there and do some trick plays. You love seeing that one there to retire Thomas. And now, all Danny Hosley has to do is get by the style in Hawaiian to get the Bananas their first sweep since, Nash or since Jacksonville and a win of the state of Tennessee. Breland Almodova stands in their way. That one fouled out of the stadium. The Glove Magician picks up his second trick play of the night and his tour high 65th right there. It's in 68 tries. One one on the party animals left fielder. Breland one for two, single, a strikeout, and a hit by pitch. 
The vibes are immaculate in the Bananas dugout. Jesse Cole, Adam Viren, Tyler Gillum. All smiles and giggles. As that ball is lifted deep to left, on his horse, Vinny DeRuby is stumbling back, makes the snag! Right in front of the track, the Italian Stallion finishes the job, and the Bananas sweep Nashville, claim the state of Tennessee, and are just three games back of the party animals, heading back to Savannah for a battle with the Drop Bears on Thursday night. This is an absolutely massive series win for the Bananas. I mean, they're going into the rest of this world tour. Still states like California, Indiana on the line. For them to claim Tennessee gets them right back in the picture. As you see some celebration there from Riley Wooten. Number one half, assistant coach for the Bananas from 2019 through 2021. And fired up to be a part of the W tonight.